from all around you long. I'm here to tell you how football is strong. We're the best. Good morning. Welcome again to the GDVL Footy Show. And what has been a very cold week here in Geelong. My word, it has been. It was so cold, actually, that it freeze the pricks off a barbed wire fence the other day. That's how cold it was in Geelong. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? But I cleaned that up absolutely beautifully. And a big round of footy last weekend out of the Cryer Devils Playground. No, it was actually at the Wintersea Gun Club. Cryer, too good for Wintersea. Anarchy, too good for Geelong West out of the Church Street Oval. Seven goal opening quarter by Anarchy. And uh, absolutely, Geelong West did catch up, but didn't quite get over the top there. East Geelong, too good for the North Geelong Magpies. Lucas Murphy booting six goals, and he now is level with Paul Briggy on 43 goals in the GDFL goal kicking. What are you looking at, Smithy? Thompson defeated Bel- Belmont Lions out of the winter resort. The Bannyford Tigers, too good for Inverleaf. <laughs> Bel- <laughs> Bel- still defeated wherever he sent was in the 94.7 <laughs> back to the round with Matt Jovanovic kicking seven goals. Hello, I'm Dick Philpott. I absolutely cannot concentrate this morning. Once again, I've assembled some of the biggest names and brains in local football to eradicate, adjudicate and not procrastinate about all the footy on in our great GDFL competition. First of all, the man who is absolutely distracting me something terrible this morning, the Bannockburn legend, Dale Smith. Good morning. Good morning, Dick. Yeah, and I apologise for that. But uh... <laughs> Obviously, I said something wrong. <laughs> no, you didn't. I was just listening to you and I just got thinking about what we are talking about before the show. But look, it's... Uh... Just looking forward to a good day. I'm hoping the day actually warms up a bit because during the week it's been pretty cold and those nights of training and even Linger here will tell us about it, but it's uh, been fairly fresh on the track. It has been fresh. What were we talking about before the show? Wait. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, every week we try to get a very special guest on the show and we've certainly come, come right with this one again this week. We've got the captain of the Inverley <laughs> Hawks in Brett, Brent Ling. G'day, Brent. How you going, mate? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's great to have you on the show, mate. And uh, I guess the question, everybody asks the same question all the time. Are you related to that man called Cameron? Believe it or not, I do have a brother called Cameron, but not the one you're thinking of. Oh, so he hasn't got red hair? No. Oh. Blonde. <laughs> Blonde. Oh, fair enough. Then he could have put a rinse in it or something. Wouldn't have a clue. Well, we're going to start off with an interview this morning done by Carol Lowther last week up at the Werribee Duck Pond. It's with Justin Tarr from the Bell Post Hill Match Committee. Here's Carol. Justin, uh, good close fought game and must have been really pleasing to get a, a win and kick away late in the uh, final quarter. Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, just good character by the boys, you know, playing away to Werribee. Obviously a very good side, um, rated them very highly. You know, it was just hard physical game, you know, with the wind and tough conditions. But um, it's just good to kick away in the end, as you said. We really found something that last 10, 15 minutes and, um, yeah, so very pleasing. Must have been a bit difficult today. Obviously, had a couple of important players out in uh, Gurge and, and uh, Lewis, but uh, yeah, had a, a good solid midfield and a good solid showing from them. Yeah, that's right. I think our midfield really stood up today. And um, with those guys out, it's just put some really good depth at the club. And, um, you know, we don't expect guys to go out there and get 30, 35 touches, just play their role every week. You know, the guys that come into the side always do a really good job. So, um, you know, they're only minor injuries getting back in two or three weeks. But, um, yeah, they said good signs. We have a couple of our best players out, but still win the game. Yeah. And obviously, Matt Jovanovic, obviously, uh, doing another great performance. He's, he's definitely in good form. Yeah, he's uh, he's an unbelievable player. He just uh, he just doesn't stop. Just the main thing is his work rate. You know, if he doesn't get the footy in the air, he gets on the ground. And um, just gives the guys a lot of confidence to have someone like that uh, down deep forward, yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks very much, Justin. No worries. Thanks, guys. And welcome back. And, of course, now we're going to have a quick look at the ladder as it stands now as we're coming towards the first half of the season. And there it is there on top, East Geelong and Belpost Hill, both undefeated. What a great game that's going to be in a couple of weeks' time. Followed by Werribee Centrals, the boys from the Duck Pond, Inverlee Hawks, and the Anarchy Roos just creeping in there to the final five at the moment. Just outside the final five, of course, the Tommy Tigers, the Violet Crumbles, Bannockburn, the North Geelong Footy Club. Are they gone? I don't know. Carrio, Belmont Lions, Wintelsea and Geelong West yet to open their account. But by all accounts, uh, Smithy and Geelong West they played pretty well last weekend. They made a late run in the game, Dick, and probably if the game had gone any longer, they might have been a chance to uh, get up over the top. But uh, they just can't afford a way to give away a seven-goal head start and then try and catch up. That's not going to happen in many games of football. Yeah, they, they must be there about. <laughs> now, the 94.7 match of the round last weekend was up at the Werribee Duck Pond. It was the Werribee Central's Footy Club. And they were played host to the Bell Post Hill Panthers, who haven't lost a game at this stage. Up till about three-quarter time, Dale, things were pretty even, but, uh, well, Bell Post Hill just drew away. 
Yeah, look, it was close all day, and there was even up until five minutes to go, the game could have gone either way. And I think Belpo still kicked four or five goals in that last four or five minute period. And Jovanovic was probably the difference between the side sides. You've got him down there for seven. I reckon he had six, but there was a disputed goal in the goal square, so he <coughs> he may have laid claim to that kick. Both sides have got some few positives come out of it in the relation to players coming back into their side. So uh, with um, Gurgic and also Lewis didn't play on the weekend. Rosenweek, one bloke didn't come back in and, and it's supposed to be coming back in the next couple of weeks. Um, and they've got two or three other players that can come back into their side. It was just Bell Post Hills, I suppose, in the first half their chip and run game didn't work for them. And that's been their key to their success. The homework done by David Leach and the Werribee boys was tremendous. They slowed them up. They gave them the first kick, gave them the second kick, but then they made the third kick come out long, and then they made a contest. So that was uh, some good work there. And they had some opportunities to win the game early with some some accurate kicking. Might have made a bit of a difference, but um, lost Camilleri and then lost Devon Ellis just after half time. So they were down to two blokes on the bench, and that made a, b- a big difference, to I reckon, to the the last five minutes of the game when it had been close all day. There wasn't a standout player in the, in the whole day. Uh, both sides had an even contribution from players. As I said, it was just that last five minutes of football by the Bell Post Hill side, and, and we know they're a good side. That's what won the game. You say there wasn't a standout <laughs> player, but obviously Matt Jovanovic is contributing fairly well for the club at the moment. Look, the thing is with Matt Jovanovic, when he leads, and leads hard at the ball, it's pretty hard to stop him. He's a big frame, he's got long arms, and as I said, I don't think there's a full-back in the league, and no disrespect to Lingy sitting beside me here either, but he is a hard man to stop, especially when the ball is delivered low and flat. Mm. If the ball's a little bit slow and it's in the air, he tends to try and fend off the defender and then go to the space where the ball's thing, uh, dropping. So that's one of his faults that I can see if he's going to rely on that coming the finals time, because obviously there'll be two or three other players flooding across his path trying to take that ball away from him. So... As I said, big bloke on the lead, very, very hard to stop, great pair of hands. He missed three or four shots also, so he could have had quite easily had ten for the day, and that would have been a really uh, a really great effort. But uh, otherwise, yeah, no, he's a good footballer and takes a fair bit of respect down in the forward line. I noticed Brett Gergic wasn't mentioned amongst the best players. Did he, did he take his place in the ground? No, nah, both him no. and Sean Lewis didn't play on okay. the weekend. They both uh, hurt themselves in the junior interleague. Actually, I think they actually hurt themselves the week before in the game prior to the, to the break and got through the training to play and wanted to play in the league, which is great for those two blokes, but uh, unfortunately didn't get through the game. Sean Lewis. still the real deal? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, look, they've still got a bit of improvement left in their side. Young Simons is doing well through the middle of the ground. And they're blokes, they've got an even contribution from every player, and that makes a hell of a difference. Guys that have come into the side, Josh Basley's come in lately, Caleb Basley, uh, Willie Urquhart, all players that have been good players up there for years, and they, they add something to the side. Well, it'll certainly be exciting when uh, Bell Post Hill and the um, East Shore Footy Club hammer it out in a couple of weeks' time. We're going to take a short break, pay some bills when we come back. We'll have Dale's under our end segment. We'll talk to our special guest, Brent Link from the Inverleaf Footy Club. Back after this. 